when you hear the word border, what are some of the images that flash through your mind? What's your immediate gut reaction? Where does it take you? Do you think of immigration lines, passports, and the process of crossing borders into another country? Do you think of checkpoints, barbed wire, border patrol, and the process of blocking people from entering a nation state? Do you think of physical boundaries or psychological ones? Is the idea of borders always grounded in reality, or can it be a figment of our imagination? I'm an artist and filmmaker, and I was born in Lahore. It's a cultural metropolis treasured in the Indian subcontinent and now a major city in Pakistan. Lahore is old, congested, noisy. Its summers are unbearably hot. That is, until the monsoon rains arrive. They roll down from the sky in thick sheets of water and wash everything. Lahore is mangoes, magical crickets, and nights steeped in the sweet scent of jasmine. It's a city where myth and reality brush up against each other continuously. But I actually grew up in Belgium, in the cool and sleepy suburbs of Volivé Saint Lambert. That's when life became exclusively French. And my childhood, a blend of Christmas cookies, European pop music, if you can believe it, and a uniformly accepted sense of what it meant to be Belgian. I was the only student of color, the only Muslim in my class for most of primary school, and that created a strange disconnect in my own understanding of who I was, a double consciousness, so to speak. We shifted back to Pakistan for a few years, and then after college, I moved to the US and fell in love with New York. Not only could I feel and respond to its energy, its high concentration of people and ideas, but I also found its mishmash and multiplicities to be oddly reassuring. They aligned very closely with my own interior diversity. Being from so many different places and therefore from no particular place at all, as you can imagine, borders are meaningless to me. They divide and limit by speaking in a very colorless, binary language. We have citizens and undocumented aliens. We have legal versus illegal human beings. We look to lines drawn in the sand in order to form immovable national identities, in order to separate what is known and safe from what is foreign and dangerous. Yet human beings are anything but fixed or easily definable. Each and every one of us is complex and full of contradictions. Our gender, sexual orientation, education, profession, the languages we speak, the books we read, the religions we embrace or don't embrace, the partnerships we choose to form in marriage or otherwise, how we parent or connect with our neighbors and community, whether we smoke or not, exercise or not, vote or not, all of these decisions, these affiliations and ways of being in the world are like discrete circles that overlap and continue to stir and form new intersections that define us. What a ridiculous notion it is then to combine millions of people with millions of shifting identities and call them one monolithic nation based presumptuously on the geometry of maps. I worked on a film about the partition of India for more than seven years, and therefore I had plenty of time to think about nationalism and borders. What used to be the subcontinent, or most of South Asia, was colonized by the British for two centuries. As their global power began to dissipate and the call for independence became louder and louder, the British decided to leave India in 1947. Along with plans for a very quick exit, they also drew lines that cut across villages and farmland and created a Muslim-majority Pakistan and a Hindu-majority India. 
As people began to move across the border in the midst of complete chaos, riots broke out. Between 12 to 20 million people were displaced and more than 1 million killed in a matter of months. After the partition, both India and Pakistan had to reinvent themselves, almost in opposition to each other. What had always been a deeply diverse place now had to be reimagined as two separate countries with sharply defined singular identities. Those who didn't fit in were forcefully integrated by using state violence. It's such a contradiction. The partition was supposed to take care of the minority problem by separating what was different. But in fact, it only exacerbated the persecution of minorities in both states, respectively. Perhaps it's my rebellion against boundaries and sameness which have propelled my work in the direction of multimedia collage. My last series of artwork was called This Heirloom. And not only did it blur the edges between different materials and cultures, it also crossed over separations in time and space. I recreated my own family history by using old photographs and placing my ancestors in landscapes that were unquestionably South Asian. My mother's family is originally from India. My father's family is from what became Pakistan. By locating my ancestors on the wrong side of the border, I was able to subvert and overcome geographic boundaries and limits. This, for example, is my maternal grandfather. He went to Aligarh University in India. He spoke fluent English, Urdu, and Sanskrit. He was a lawyer, but also an excellent tennis player. He passed away soon after the partition. My mother believes he died of a broken heart. I never knew him. I've seated him in Lahore, in Pakistan, in front of one of the gates to the walled city. This is my paternal grandfather. He owned some land in central Punjab on the Pakistani side and studied English literature in Lahore, in Pakistan. I still come across some of his books in my father's library. I've placed him in front of the Jama Mosque in India. Art can help us imagine a better world, and that's what I tried to do with this series. It's a bridging of memories, but it's also an effacement of borders. I'm sure many of you are thinking, if not borders, then what? What about love? I like its capaciousness, its ability to come clean about all that has happened in the past in order to move forward together. Love has no use for walls or borders. It's about diffusion, melding, harmonizing. It doesn't hem in, it spreads outward. Adrian Rich speaks beautifully about the edges that blur in one of her poems. When I hear those words, I visualize edges that bleed and blur into one another, crisscrossing lines and fields, a lot like collage work. Rich talks about human boundaries. She talks about how the body's pain is not the same as the pain on the streets. Yet it's possible for us to connect our own personal experience to that of humanity. If we watch the edges that blur, if we negotiate the distance between us and are able to see ourselves in the other. I know it takes confidence, perhaps even a certain level of courage. It certainly forces us to step out of our comfort zone. But in the end, it's so worth it. For once we dare to love, there's no more room for fear or borders. Thank you.